I think egomania is due for a due for a renaissance. Yeah. Everybody's so hung up on being pretentious or whatever or not, and hum humility. Mm -hmm. Shit's so boring. Underrated. Underrated. What's your latest existential crisis been? My latest existential crisis? Oh boy. Um, I've been wondering what the theology and the religion of Fairly Odd Parents is. Mm. No, yeah. are we talking about the, the God, the fairies themselves, or like the people? Both. Well, I'd say the people like, have. Does have... believe in God? Well, he's he's special. I'd say that, like his dad and Vicky and all those other fucks. They all probably practice the usual dogmatic religions that we practice here in the natural world. Now, the fairies probably have a higher understanding of religion than uh, any type of theocratic, you know, uh, <laughs> ideology. They're probably on top of that. In reality, they probably are like the god in that, like they're the religious <clears throat> sect. I, I like to imagine universe. Jorgen is the, uh, he's the god. Yes. It's Jorgen von Strangled. You go to the temple to worship Jorgen von Stranglehold. Yeah. His big fucking Arnold Schwarzenegger cameo <laughs> parody ass. <clears throat> he had the giant fucking. Everyone held these like dainty little <clears throat> wands. He had this fucking like staff with like a giant yellow wand on it. It was ridiculous. Anyway, what have you been listening to? Anyway, you? this is oh. this is the uh, Our Beautiful Dark Twisted podcast. We talk about music is it? and cartoon religions. Is it? Well, I mean, it kind of is. We have one episode to prove it. Yeah, is it really a podcast? It... <laughs> it's just a series of recordings whenever we went, like it. Went live one evening. I don't even... <laughs> I couldn't... Our opinions matter. Hey, remember that time we recorded an episode and we didn't actually do anything with it? Yeah, it was like a lost episode. Yeah. That's going to be in our box set in 20 years. <laughs> I can't wait till we're actually big enough to have fans it's, demand it's like the... It'd be like the Twin Peaks, like you could get the big collector's Blu-ray set or whatever. It's got like the lost snippets or whatever, or it's just a bunch of unused footage and shit of Twin Peaks. That it's has not enough. necessary. I know, you, you say that, but then like other people who are, you know, balls deep into Twin Peaks lore, they'll be like, no, you gotta, you have to understand. That one scene where, where Dale Cooper went and ordered some coffee and then looked out into the pines and saw like a, a fucking mannequin with like a super long white nose. That's very integral to the story lore. You wouldn't understand. And you're like, what? This is just, what? What have you been listening to, dude? What have I been listening to? Well, that's a that's a wonderful question. I've actually been delving back into um, Modest Mouse a lot lately. Okay. Like the other day, just kind of just kind of stumbled back upon them and have been going back through most of their records. And dag on, did I forget how good they are? Are you a big Modest Mouse fan? I still have yet to dive into them the way I probably should have, you know. Mm. I am boy. I, I have no excuse. Mouse. You really don't. No excuse. You really don't. There's not really a, a bad place to start with them. I went back and listened to We Were Dead Before the Ship Even Sank, which was like it's kind of an overlooked record because it was a later release, and you know right. the true fans don't like that because. They're commercial, sure, but it's still got it's got some bops on it. It's got some bops, real bops, bangers, and then their first doing? their first three like quote unquote true indie releases are all incredible, all incredible in their own right. That's amazing. Um, that's kind of been taken over what I've been listening to a lot lately. Besides, like the big releases that okay. came out today, like the Carter Five or Have you been Brockhampton listening? last week. Have you been listening to the Carter Five? Well, let um, me see. are you are you a Lil Wayne fan? Am I? That's or are you familiar? What What's your experience with Wayne? I wasn't a Wayne fan, like when I initially got into hip hop, which hasn't been all that long. And like, I don't know, about a year or so ago, I went on like a Wayne dive into like <laughs> the, the, the Carters two and three. And like his like features around that time, and like I didn't love him, but I I just kind of went on a binge of him for a little bit, then tossed him to the side, if you will. And so yeah. I wasn't like super hyped for the Carter Five, but I definitely have been trying to listen to it. Right. 
and I think you and I are part of this weird generation that when we when we were like when it was time for us to get when we were all like 13, 12, 13 years old and it was time for us to all get into music, right? Mm-hmm. Wayne was in like a really bad part of his career where everything he was dropping was just fucking terrible. It, it was, it was like, the tail end of his peak. Oh uh, yeah, like that I'm not a human being too or whatever. Yeah, like that yeah. like these like awful albums are just like I don't his lyrics are just fucking We were we were like we were like two years away from prime little Wayne. Right, you and I and then but he was like but through that we he had, you know, become popular and then so it's mm-hmm. like maybe there was some kind of vicarious expectation for us to be like, Yeah, he's good and then we go and listen to him and it's like this is fucking garbage. And then of course, you know, streaming wasn't really as big of then, so we couldn't as easily go back and listen to his old stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean I didn't feel like spending like twelve dollars on the Carter two oh, back then. Right. So, and also, you know, what do you listen to? So uh, there was this, I always thought in my mind for the longest time that Lil Wayne was just terrible, but, and then it's like, he's had like a kind of a resurgence in like his fans and stuff who were like, no, 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 he's actually a fucking legend. If you go back and listen to his like, you know, mid to late 2000 releases, you know, you know, Carter two, three, and like, there's like what dedication mixtapes or whatever. Apparently those Mm -hmm. are, you know, classics. So. He got classic under classic under his belt. And I think the big reason he started kind of like getting a resurgence is uh, like he's been dropping more features and being a part of like bigger acts and like showing that he still has some prowess and like getting those older fans excited again. Right. It does. Like it kind of seems. Go on. When he was on like Tyler's album last year and like he still manages to have features with like Kanye or Drake and still manages to pull out some pretty good lines for that and it shows that he's still got something left in him. Right. He's been making music forever too. He's been he's he started making music when he was like 13 years old or something crazy like that. He's literally been in the game for like 20 years and he's only like 35. Yeah. yeah. So it's like it's absolutely nuts. But anyway, the Carter 5, it, it, it's almost like it was almost like hyperbolically like overhyped and over like it, it almost, if it had been, if he had waited another year, it would have reached that same level of like detox. And I mean, it was almost there to like, where it was just like, Oh, where it was the butt of a, jo- a lot of jokes, you know, Oh, mm-hmm. the quarter phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. Can't like, wait to get it in half life or detox. Yeah. Right. With the, <laughs> yeah. Half life three. Right. But, but here it is. And it seemed, it was really out of the blue seemingly, you know, so I remember I like think, it. Yeah, I think Cash Money had like teased it, like for a couple of weeks now, but it didn't seem real still. Mm-hmm. Like he, he, like he said it was coming, but he had been saying it for so long that it was hard to right. believe until basically it was right in front of us. I think sometime in like 2014, Drake was at a concert. and was like, y'all know the Carter dropping, Carter Five dropping next week, y'all. And it's like, oh, yeah, four years later, still don't have it. But all right. Mm-hmm. Um. So. Did you listen to the whole thing? It's an hour and a half long. Just about, it's an hour so. and a half long, and your boy had to work today. You know, bring home the paper, so I got to listen to probably about half of it. Probably about half of it. I'd say. I'd say that's a safe bet. I got like two tracks after that Kendrick track, and I was like, "All right, got to pay the bills." But from what I've heard, based on the amount of hype I know. It has, because obviously I don't know a lot of it because I wasn't around for it, but I'd say it it does a very respectable job living up to that hype. You think so? <clears throat> I've not listened I to it. I think so. You have not listened to it? I listened to like the track with X and the, a little bit of the Kendrick track, and I was just... I just was not... I was not... Really? The, I've, not been in the, I've not been in a hip-hop mood really lately, so no, I that's... just... And it, he's not he's not a favorite artist of mine, so I wasn't gonna you know switch it up just mm-hmm. to, for him. So it was you know, and it, but you know if if I if we wait and see here and if, you know, people are really loving it and they're thinking it's great, I'll probably hop in. And I haven't really dug it into him, you know, mm-hmm. that much anyway. I've not listened to. I tried to listen to the Carter three one time, but I, it, I something happened. But <laughs> something happened. Something came up. Um, well, shoot! I look at the time. It's been... not Carter three time. Right. And sometimes this stuff sounded a little dated to me, so I was like, okay, I'm not going to deal with this. Which is kind of a problem I feel like it has. It's 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 got a weird thing of at some point sounded dated and at the same time him trying to catch up with current trends and it's like he doesn't necessarily fit them 100%. Right. It's kind of like, kind of like Eminem's Kamikaze where it was like it was weird <laughs> hearing Eminem over top of the beats he was on. 
it was just you you needed to like mentally adjust yourself almost right you know what i'm saying uh-huh yeah it's yeah but it's like i feel like these rappers like your your late 2000 your bling era and forward are gonna ha- have a hard time in their older age because you got someone like jay-z or, and kanye but i don't want to use kanye i want to use jay-z as an example here he, mm-hmm. you know with um 444 he was able to like fall back and he was not using modern production on his latest album and no. he was able to release a mature record without having you know your know, blatant trap drums hi-hats you know obnoxious beats auto-tuned whatever you know bragged i mean he was still pretty braggadocious on that record but he's like the richest mm-hmm. rapper of all time so or second richest next to like p diddy i believe but, yeah well i feel like that's an example of him trying to push himself forward artistically as opposed to like little wayne at this point is just trying to prove that like i can still be who i was before you know what i mean they're like Lil wayne's just trying to hold on while jay-z at 444 was trying to push himself forward and i think that's the difference that's fair i'm just trying to visualize how these ra- rappers are going to be able to make like i don't want to say humble music but like mature music <laughs> you know what i mean because for the longest time, Lil Wayne's go-to, like the, the the his joke was not his joke, but his his gimmick was that he was like the rapper who always ate pussy. That was like his thing. Yeah, you know. And I hear he doesn't talk about you it as much. In record, Everyone's got something. I hear he does not talk about it as much. Not as much. No, I was a little disappointed. <laughs> Gotta say, I was kind of looking forward to that. But I don't know. I'm sure it's a fine record. Uh, the cover art is like the same one though from like literally five years ago, which is hilarious. <laughs> I do, um, I do love that art style that he's got rolling for like the entire series, if you want to call it that. Right. So, anything else to say about Little Wayne and the Carter Five? Um, I mean. I've had one day to sit with half of it, so I'm not going to try to throw out any super controversial <clears throat> opinions other than I like it. I'd listen to it again. It's very strange how he got X, XX Tentacion to be featured on. Mm-hmm. I wonder if this was in the works or if they um, dug through his grave, his corpse. Yeah, that's what, that's what I was too. wondering. I think I read something that alluded to the fact that they had been talking before he died and um, he sent them some. They just some don't stuff. strike me as like the type that would like no, go together. You know I what I mean? Yeah, there's such there's such a gap. How old mm-hmm. was X? Like twenty one. If, like if that, that. Or, he was like twenty he twenty one. Like twenty. Just, and I don't so. know. If, you know, I'm not enough into Wayne. I'm sure he's got. I know he's someone who can deliver like emotional music and um more thought provoking music, but. And not to say that X it really does deliver a lot, that he really did deliver a lot of you know thoughtful thought provoking music or sad, but their you know their lanes are just so different. Mm-hmm. And I will say, from what I've heard, Wayne does actually get fairly fairly introspective. It's not like a full to pimp a butterfly four forty four type full delve into the psyche of old little Wayne, but it's that sounds weird to say old little Wayne. Yeah, but it's, it, it's still, there it's there are a couple tracks, there are a couple tracks where he actually <laughs> right. dives into something a little bit, a little bit more than the, just I'm the greatest rapper alive. I hear the Kendrick feature is like old. It's like to pimp a butterfly, good kid. Yeah, era. like like good kid, like pimp a butterfly era. The weird voices and shit that he used to do a lot. But he still does that. That's the thing that gets me. Like I see people online saying that, but he. He's always done that. I don't understand why that necessarily makes it stand out as. I think old. the one that there's a part of the song because I did listen to that one. I lied. I did, I did listen to that one. And there's a part where he did he does the same vocal inflection that he does on the part on the, like the second half of you, where mm-hmm. his vo- is just so nasally and out of control. Where it's he just like he, yeah. in three years now. So <clears throat> Maybe. shout out to you, best track on that album. Who uh, I might have to agree but they're all great tracks so i'm not gonna i haven't thought about it just, just like politics and all right are pretty yeah, wesley's just, theory not to oh, dive yeah. too deep into a to pimp a butterfly theme podcast right so anything else 
on the Carter Five specifically. Um, no, nah, check it out. I'm sure you, anyone probably has already. It's going to be the biggest album of the year, probably. Right, and I was actually amazed because here we'll use this to transition into talking about Kanye West. But he tweeted out was like, "I know Wayne's going to sell more than me," and I didn't really believe that before the I album came out. I didn't believe that. I was like, I thought maybe. I mean, I knew it would be big, but I, I knew it would be big for hip hop fans, but I didn't realize it would be as big for outsider. Not to say like, you know, but yeah, just, I kind of thought know, the more general kind of his time had come, you know what I mean? Right. I figured, you know, he had been replaced by the young thugs and the little Uzis at this point mm-hmm. for people who want that kind of music, but there's still a pretty big market for Lil Wayne, a lot of nostalgia, maybe and a lot of, yeah. Uh, well, I know at work, fans. I was, I know at work, at least I was talking and when I got there, I asked them if the people there had listened to it. And a lot of them, by a lot, I mean, like the two people I worked with said, like, they miss Carter Air a little Wayne. And they were like, they didn't even realize he had dropped something, but they had been waiting on something like that. And they just hadn't heard anything from Little Wayne or else they would have checked it out <laughs> sooner. And it was like, I didn't realize his name was even worth bringing up right now. Right. So it was, yeah, just, it it was does... kind of a culture shock to me. Yeah, I agree. The merch he dropped with it was horrendous. I was like terrible. the I like the V shirt. I like the shirt oh, that had a big old that. red V on it. It's stupid. It's what? very it's very like twenty thirteen looking. Yeah, but hey, I kinda I kinda dig the it. The album is was made like in twenty thirteen, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he had the he had the shirt in the vault too. <laughs> yeah, he's been working on that for Bird you know, just dangling the key in front of him. Right. Oh, you'll never get Birdman's it. Birdman's a fucking asshole. Yeah, he is. And Screw Birdman. Dingus. Oh, anyway, so, yeah, Kanye said, you know, he's going to sell more than me, and that's fine. But, I don't know, like I said, I didn't believe it, but it should. I, I think it's probably highly likely, it's pretty likely now. Mm-hmm. Anyway, though, tomorrow night, Kanye West will be on Saturday Night Live premiering his new album, Yandi. Mm-hmm. Yandi? A spiritual successor to Yeezus of sorts with the cover art, you know, mirroring that with instead of a CD, it looks like a mini disc of sorts with a purple label. And there are rumors that Young Thug, XXX, Tentacion, 6 9 Ty Dolla Sign, of course, and maybe 070 Shake are going to be on it. Yeah, and probably many, many more. I'd venture. I'd venture probably much more than those. Paul guys. Simon feature. Uh, looking forward to that. And, uh, yeah, it's just very. Um, it seems it's 2018 has been a crazy year for hip hop. You know, I just who would have fucking thought we would get two and a half Kanye albums this year? We'll call it three, probably more than that. Goes. And then maybe a collab with Chance the Rapper and Throne Two, which I'm still trying to figure out if Throne Two is the collab with Chance. But I remember I, I saw would, on Instagram the other day, Kanye West posted a picture of Jay-Z and Beyonce getting mm-hmm. into like a vehicle or something. And, and I wouldn't like, imagine he would friends. use like Throne 2 for anything right. else. Throne, you know yeah, what I mean? The Throne is very, it's just, it's the group of Kanye and Jay-Z. So it'd be like kid I, see, it'd be like him saying Ghost 2 and it'd be oh, him and him Young Thug or something. something like that wouldn't, it wouldn't make sense. Yeah. But yeah. Are, are you excited for, for Yandi, or are you kind of scared like I am? I'm somewhere in between. I mean, somewhere I'm anxious. I, I don't have cable, but I figured out how I can watch it live on my computer, so oh, I've well. not got that locked down, so I'll be there. I'll have to sit through the stupid, half the stupid SNL sh- shitty skits. Hey, Just SNL can be good. SNL can be good. Can be good. Half the time, it'll be like, it's good, and then it happens like, all right, why am I wasting my time? But Off topic, who's hosting again? Do you remember? Adam Driver. Adam I don't Driver. know why. That's right. I mean, the time I for Black Klansman is yeah, Black Klansman over. But that it's came been out like a month. Yeah, yeah. It came out like a month and a half ago. Well, I don't get they haven't had SNL for a while, I guess. Is that? Oh, yeah. Like I guess season maybe, maybe, maybe. But damn. Oh, he'll, he'll, go on. Okay. Speaking of host of SNL, how do you feel about that Fader article written about Kanye? I didn't read all of it, but he, I remember he quoted like Alex Jones or something and called him a, I heard he that said was, that Alex Jones was a, uh, a matrix breaker. I heard they he retracted that. He was quoted saying that, um, 
he would have preferred Louis C.K. to be the host of SNL. He defended ASAP Barry. Oh, I remember that. He did that on Twitter. That was pretty... Um, <laughs> I didn't like that. But yeah. I think they, the fader has retracted those statements he said about uh, Alex Jones. Mm-hmm. They have. I don't. Which makes me kind of distrust the entire article because it's. Oh, like, they they are not to be trusted after what no. they did to Anthony Fantano. After Our they boy. tried to put out some kind of fucking dumb hit piece that made no sense and had no actual backing behind it. But hey, Fantano, if you're listening to this, we love you. Send us some of your t-shirts. I'm sure he's a big fan. Friend of the show. <laughs> he's one of we'll the three him. listeners we have. Friend of the show, Anthony Fantano. He was like talking at Yale tonight, which is pretty good for him, dude. I like him a yeah, lot. Yeah, good for him. He's a good man. I saw him. I think he's, I don't know. I think he's having some problems. He was on Twitter. He was like tweeting some really depressing stuff. And it just seemed like he was really going through it, man. And he, everyone was like, in the comments, right, was like, like, everyone in the comments was like, hey, you know, if you need to take some time off, man, go for it. And he was like, it's kind of personal. Nothing I can really help. So I'm just going to continue working and try to work through it. Oh, so well. it sounds like he's got some real personal shit going on. I hope he. Maybe it's like a family member or something. Yeah, that's what I'm kind of... I don't want to speculate, but... Yeah, I mean, this is not the Anthony Fantano speculation podcast. It can be. I love Fantano, man. (laughs) We're going to turn it into speculating about his personal life. I don't know what to think about the Carter 5 until that review drops, so... (laughs) Anyway. Yandy. With 6'9". I just what is Kanye like attracted to like sexual predators and yeah. just abusers in general? Freak Bill Cosby. He fucks with ASAP Mari. Fucks with Chris Brown. Fucks with Six Nine. He fucked with XXX. I don't understand. I mean, and it's like it'd be different if these people were like revolutionary artists. None of these people are like worth a shit. I mean, mm-hmm. Bill Cosby, of course, had like a. <laughs> it's a little different. His greatness was pretty much completely toppled over by his rapes, his like fifty rapes. So, I mean, it doesn't even like balance out like at all. It's just like over topples that shit completely. So it's like not even. There's no. There's no excuse. But I love Yeezy. But I feel God like damn. it's just a. It's just a matter of. God, I don't know. I guess it's a matter of him trying to just pull. I don't. I don't want to say it's just him pulling big names for the sake of getting big names on his album because he's he's not had to do that before. He gets who he wants. Like it's not like he's like, oh, I gotta get the big name because they're the big name. No, he's the big name. So I, mean, I don't quite understand where he's going. That's true. With this, but Kanye's kind of been a clout chaser. You think so? You know, like he's always. It's not that he would. I think he realizes a lot of like current trends and talents and is like, all right, I like that. I'm going to put that on my album. Mm -hmm. I think that's why he got young thug for like highlights. Mm -hmm. Um, that's why 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 they worked with Chris Brown or not Chris Brown with Frank ocean on, you know, um, well all the time, but like, you know, in 2011 before Frank had really blown up, you know, he had him on, uh, what on uh, the throne, no church in the wild. And, I don't know. He's always kind of been like that in a certain way. He got Chief Keef on Yeezus. I mean, I don't he know. He had Lupe on late registration. Right, exactly. I think it's a matter of, I mean, it's pretty well documented that like, I mean, like look at my beautiful Tark Twist of Fantasy, the namesake for this podcast, where he, um, like, it was really like him directing other people. Like it was like an other people he's, featuring Kanye album almost. He's he's always taken the, like the film director approach to uh, crafting albums, especially on mm-hmm. albums like like Fantasy, like Pablo, especially these big albums. You know, mm-hmm. yeah. smaller albums like Jesus and Yeah, don't have that much of. You know, they don't have that touch to them as much, but it's certainly evident on. And so I like guess. That. I guess that's what he's doing now is he's like, all right, let's see who some new faces that I can use to craft my sound with are. And I guess he just thought that they would work. God, I don't know. It makes me, um, I don't know. I, I don't. Do you, okay. Do you wait? Until I hear the music. I'm not a fan of 6 9 Wasn't really a fan of X. But we'll see how it goes. 
do you think that your opinion on them or like Kanye featuring them on this album would your opinion would change if they weren't the people they are? Oh yeah. That's think so? pretty much the whole thing. I mean, I understand like separating the art from the artist, but like some people, you know, like X, I, I never listened to his shit. I mean, he was a fucking piece of shit. Uh, you know, it sucks that he got killed early, but he was a fucking scumbag. He had a lot of fucking issues and, you know, it does suck that he didn't get the, uh, you know, chance to redeem himself. It did kind of look like he was on the cusp of, he was doing a lot of charity shit, I think. Mm-hmm. And that, you know, it sucks that he died, but he was still a fucking piece of shit. Mm-hmm. So I, you know, morally, I couldn't bring myself to, you know, support this guy or his music. And, you know, I don't think I was missing out on much. I mean, his albums just aren't, they they weren't for me, but Mm -hmm. people obviously saw something in him. Even other people I like showed interest in him, you know, Kanye, uh, Mm -hmm. Joey Badass, who I really fucking like. He, they, they, they dropped a couple joints together and I never got it. And I was just, but some people really seem to dig it. So you, so you think that if... X wasn't the abuser he is, he was and 6 9 wasn't the pedophile that he is that you wouldn't care as much even if you don't like the music. I would I would definitely give them a chance, you know. I I'm a lot I mean, I don't want to sound like I'm closed-minded or like whatever, but it's just these you got to understand these are fucking these are criminals. <laughs> so okay, let's look at it this way. Um my favorite I don't want to one of my favorite cuts on Pablo is Waves, even though it's got Chris yeah. Brown. I think Chris Brown did great on the track. Uh-huh. So do you I think if it wasn't it. Chris Brown that you would maybe like the song more or does the, the fact that it's Chris Brown like makes you like the lot? But, I, I mean, it's hard to reconcile myself because Chris Brown's a fucking abuser. He's a fucking piece of shit. But you you're, not giving, you're, not, you're, not, you're not giving money to Chris Brown. You know, I, don't know. I probably am. I guess he's collecting royalties, although probably not enough to like make a difference. I mean, yeah, exactly. I mean, he's making like you get like less than a penny per stream, and then he's got to get like less than a quarter of that for that oh. song alone. So no, you're not making a difference. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it's it's case by case, I guess. Mm-hmm. And I don't want to turn this into like a big old political thing, but like, and I'm trying to take it there, man. It's just interesting to talk, I think. But you know, it's it's case by case, and you know, it's it's probably Kanye's fault that I listen to that. You know, I like that song at all. You know, like mm-hmm. if it were any other artist, I wouldn't really give a shit. Well, no you other. Know? I don't think any other artist would make that song as good as it was. Like his production all over that was why it was as good as it was. Exactly. Like Chris Brown solo stuff, I don't care about that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So. So I'm excited. Yeah. I wonder if it's 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 not going to come out. No, it's probably going to. I guess it'll just drop tomorrow night, right? Yeah, I would assume it would drop after SNL because that's kind of what he did with Pablo, where like he performed well, on Pablo and tried. then. He tried to drop it like right after, but his fucking website sucks. Well, that was also a whole ordeal with that that album in particular. Oh god, that was such an exciting time to be a Yay fan. Yeah, it was. That was, and I was like fresh into my Yay experience. That was such oh, a fun time. Oh, yeah, it was my first like new Yay. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, um, it was incredible. I miss that especially time. since you didn't have to feel like yeah, you, know, you almost like you got to keep it in the, like being a Yay fan now. It's a little tougher. It feels a little harder now, just because of how he's such. I mean, he's always been a controversial, pe- you know, individual, and people have always, you know, shitty ass uh, Twitter, com- Twitter comments have always been quick to, you know, oh, yeah, me, 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 of Kanye West, more like Kanye sucks dick, you know, like okay, whatever, oh, fish stick, <laughs> you know, but like now it's like it's more than that, you know. Yeah, now it's like oh, it's he a, defends it's a political stance. He allows pedophiles on his album. Yeah, he wears the mega hat. Well, he also wore the Kaepernick shirt. Mm, that was an interesting combo. I think I that's did. just proof that he's just a provocateur at like the highest yeah. degree. Yeah, like I don't, he knows. I, I have a hard time believing that he gives a shit about most of the stuff he says just because of how yeah. someone's going crazy on Blackboard. Um, Just because of like, who would do that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I, I definitely have a hard time believing that everything that comes out of his mouth is 100% genuine. 
Yeah, I mean, especially when he says something super controversial and then comes out with a, with a song like or, "Lift Yourself" or, or "I Love or, It," or yeah, or just some sort of like contradictor. You, you ever see? Just like, fun. You ever see like the fourteen people he's following on Twitter? <laughs> no, it's like the like the most controversial list of people. It's like his wife, of course. Then it's Obviously. like Donald Trump, and then it's like Candace Owens, and then it's like Bernie Sanders, and then it's like. Uh, what's the guy from Twitter? Like he's just got his name. The guy like, from Twitter. Uh, his name's like Zach or something, I think. But whatever that is, and it's just like this, like just Elon Musk. You know, it's just these like. <laughs> art, the, it's the like the I'm very smart. Yeah. <sighs> love him or hate him, you gotta love him. <laughs> love him or if, hate if him, you gotta gonna, love him. Put that on a T-shirt. If you're me, at least. I mean, I still dig the guy's music. Yeah. I wish he'd stop being so goddamn weird, but what do you I love it. I love it. Makes it fun. You're such a fucking hoe. I love it. Yep. All right, as we smoothly transition from that point to the next point. What are your thoughts on Brockhampton? <laughs> Jesus Christ. That I think that sound pretty much I mean, did, was that part of the did you sample Brockhampton just now? What was that? <laughs> I did it actually, sounds yes. Like of, sounds like one of their new techno beats. I mean, I thought it was pretty I thought it was pretty good. It wasn't great. It wasn't amazing. It wasn't as good as like saturation two or three for me. Or one. But how do you rank how do you rank those? Uh Okay, if we're doing these four, it goes saturation two, then three, then one. But that's like three and one could like be switched in on any given day. So it goes two, three, one, iridescence. And I haven't okay. listened to all. Of, I haven't listened to all American trash. So um, I'm sure there's some good cuts on there, but there's some decent ones. But it's not like <laughs> whoa. So they lost a mirror, and they basically had to like. Someone made like a pie chart that like demonstrated like where how the time was like percentage of the album was you know spent with one member and you know between each of the members. So they lost Amir and so pretty much Amir. So everyone had to like you know fill in. Kevin is still like a fucking Kevin's on like twenty five percent of each album. Although yeah, but I it think doesn't feel like he is. Six hooks. That's just because he six what hooks. hooks? What hooks? Yeah, if we're talking iridescence, yeah, like there's like four hooks on the whole you know like yeah. twelve track album, but. Um. Yeah, that was a big issue for me on this record. Just the sticky hooks aren't there, and I, you know, that's fine. Um, I, but I like it was it was part of their charm. That. I like that they're also moving away from it as part of kind of like a say like that's not all we have in store. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Being versatile is very is very good skill. Mm-hmm. But I do think it's kind of funny that they lost a mirror who was arguably like the least important member to the p- fact that they had hooks yeah he and never sang hooks like he never did a hook other than kind of heat and they lost him and now the hooks are gone like you'd expect them oh. to lose kevin and that happened i don't know right. i found that kind of weird well i don't know what to tell you um are we going to bring up the fact that amir like what happened with amir like how do you feel about that is that something we want to get into? Is I mean, that worth talking everyone, about? Everyone's kind of got their opinions formed, and everyone, you know, if you know about Brockhampton at this point, you know what happened. You know how you feel. I mean, it sucks, but uh, he did what he did. So I guess this, they felt that was the best. And to be honest, they kind of had to. There's no way they couldn't have done it because it they would look like such fucking assholes, hypocrites. Really, such hypocrites because. Some artists can get away with stuff like this. Some some of them can do it, mm-hmm. but they could not because their image and their fan base and their lyrics are and their fan base is all connected on this kind of unspoken, um, unspoken like, uh, like I don't want to so like agreement that, agreement agreement that everyone kind of you know recognizes the same, you know, like oh you know our shows and our music you know we're, we're safe spaces for you know you can be who you are. We are not going to mm-hmm. judge you, you know, you know, the lead man's, you know, gay. Yeah. Uh, you know, we don't, you know, we don't fuck with, 
anyone, any, you know, sexual predator, you know, that's, it's just kind of this unspoken rule mm-hmm. that you get with their fan base. Pretty similar, I guess, to what happened to um, Power Bottom, where and that band was decimated by their sexual assault. They, they, and they could not. No, there was, was no so way they were ever coming back to them because that was, you know, it, it's like 5% of Rockhampton. It was like a good 80% of queer yeah. or Power Bottom. Your favorite queer punk band, but is there another one on the market? I, you know, I think the queer punk underground scene is probably pretty active right now. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's pretty booming. Just not really in a way for me to get a hold of. I don't think. <laughs> but I mean, overall, what do you think of the album? What I think of the. It's like I said before me and you started recording this i like it quite a bit it's got some of my favorite (laughs) cuts from them on there like san marcos district uh, new orleans i think are all fantastic but it just and i don't want to say it's the hooks because that's not necessarily (laughs) there's something about it you're fine there's just something about it that kind of like takes me out of it there's something about him that just kind of takes me out of it and makes me not enjoy it quite as much as like saturation too. Yeah. Do you like this like weird, like British techno aesthetic that is all over the record? Yeah. Yeah. I dig it. I like I it a it. lot. I like, like the, like the samples from, I don't even know who it is. It's from like an old British TV show or something. I think mm-hmm. but I like that a lot. It added a lot of, um, my biggest problem was the um it didn't feel as uh Jesus Christ, what's the term? Connected? Thought out connected. It didn't feel as um you know, like they were all meshing together the way they used mm-hmm. to on saturation one, two, and three. Because mm-hmm. uh, the lyrics from each member just felt so disconnected. You know, each rapper was kind of talking their own shit, singing well, their own shit. You know apart I, from you know I agree. And I with felt like that. it was helped to did bring what little connection there was there together. Mm-hmm. Well, I agree with that. I don't think that's a problem. I think that's kind of, I think that was kind of the point is I don't want mu When I listen to music, there's some things you listen to where it's like, Oh, you have to understand what the artist was going through at this time in order for you to really get right. why it's so good. And it's like that it should be kind of timeless. Right. If you can't have, yeah, if you have to have this extra context, then mm-hmm. it's then it's useless as an album, and I feel like that's I'm exactly being... what. Go on. No, you go on because you you had a point you were going to make. No, I'm, no, you go on because I know I can remember this, and it's I'll connect it. All right, All right fine. But I was going to say, um, I feel almost like hypocritical saying this because it's going to completely go against what I said. But there is a certain context to the fact that they did this lose a mirror, and it's like they're trying to piece it back together. And right. it's almost like they know it doesn't quite work. And instead of like trying to Frankenstein it, they just they just kind of throw caution to the wind and just kind of do whatever feels right for them as individuals. Because I know like, did you ever watch the like making of documentary of saturation? I watched a little bit of it. I wanted to finish it, but it's like four hours long, you know. So mm-hmm. I know they talked a lot about how they um how like they would just sit in a room. And like throw any ideas out and didn't really matter what, like everybody throws ideas out. And I feel like they kind of took that to the extreme of just everybody just does whatever on recording and they just kind of throw the best stuff together. And I feel like that was kind of, I feel like as far as like lyrically and like as far as the, the, the actual rapping on it goes, I feel like that was kind of what they were going for. Yeah. Yeah. What you're saying, what you were saying earlier about you know an an album that doesn't have that if you can't figure out what's going on or understand the album or enjoy the album without some kind of extra context that you want, that it's a piece of shit that it's you know it's useless. Mm-hmm. That reminds me a lot of um, Childish Gambino's because the internet, which apparently came with like a seventy page screenplay that you had to read yeah. through to understand. And you know, I kind of agree that's like garbage. Now mm-hmm. that album is still you can still enjoy. It. I definitely I've not fucking read that shit. And I, you know, I, the album's okay. It's fine. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't totally fail without it, but it definitely is weaker that I'm supposed to 
if you have to if you have to use that as a crutch like oh you didn't get it you didn't like the album well it's probably because you didn't know this right. then that's, that's what the, like that's, that's the problem that's what their fan that's what his fans would definitely say i believe you know mm-hmm. about that yeah but what are your favorite tracks off oh you you, you said some of your favorite yeah, San Marcos. I, said, I said my three i'd say probably san marcos district and uh berlin or not berlin i always get berlin and new orleans mixed up because they're places i guess right right this and tanya's good like, tanya's good tanya's great yeah the first like third of this album is, does not do it for me at all but then it really picks up toward the middle and then um see uh, I, i'm gonna go go on i partially agree with that but at the same time i def i enjoy like new orleans berlin and something about him enough to where i kind of disagree with that i don't like new orleans <sighs> i don't like the intro track your loss it's um i think it's the beat the beat is very it gives me like anxiety because it, it's like it's like it doesn't resolve like the melody of it you know what mm-hmm. i mean i know what you mean it's it's like forever like sustained i don't know how to describe it but i know what you mean i just like it my favorite tracks are probably district jovert uh honey oh, yeah, san marcos tanya fabric yeah, like the last three songs are great, dude. Dude, okay, that's that's the problem. Is some of those tracks like Honey and Jover? Like, I do love those tracks, but I don't remember them. And maybe it's because it's only yeah. been out for a week. I mean, I can't necessarily have like full thoughts on all the tracks, but like, where it's only been out, but like, I don't remember all those tracks. Yeah, it's got this weird issue where <clears throat> I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. It's a weird album. Mm-hmm. It's definitely their weirdest yet. <coughs> my biggest problem with it is that my favorite star on here just did not, you know, my favorite Brockhampton member did not play to his strengths and do the best he usually does is Matt Champion. That I dude, really, same dude. I I adore Matt. He's one of my favorite. Easily on my Saturation favorite. Saturation two, three. He was fucking spitting hard, bro. And I even just, on I one, I, I, I adore him on one. Yeah, they're yeah. He's always had this. I mean, there's still a moment here too. Mm-hmm. That I oh, he's definitely got some moments, moments, but it's just not the way it used to be. Um, Bareface stood out really well in this album for me. I liked everything he did on here. Bareface stood out tremendously. Dom still did his normal thing. Dom Dom is like the most consistent member, I'd say. Yeah, I mean, he's he's just consistently good every time. At this point, I'm kind of bored of him because I always know that's going to be so straightforward and good that it's kind of like I don't I don't care anymore. Yeah, but his like similes and wordplay and the way he's able to you know tell you know he's he's very good at imagery too. Oh, for sure, uh, for sure. That's one of his biggest strengths. He's a, he's probably the best lyricist of the group. Oh, for sure. He's um, a lyrical spirit to miracle individual. Yeah. But he's a little more, if you ask me. Mm-hmm. I think um, Joba Joba was kind of hit or miss. Yeah. Joba's always been hit or miss for me, though. <laughs> yeah, I really his, like his his performance on Jover. Um, is that how you say that? I think Jover the and French. I, I really like him on San Marcos with the auto tune. He sounds really great mm-hmm. with auto tune. He does. I didn't even recognize him at first, honestly. I can I thought it was uh-huh. Kevin. I, I thought it was Kevin as well, but it's it's him. It's him. Yeah. <laughs> Mm, yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, Merlin I'm does his thing all right. Merlin, not he's probably my lead. I don't want to, you know, say oh I don't like him, but he's Merlin just doesn't do it for me like he does for some people. He's definitely he's definitely like a divisive, polarizing. You either love him or hate him. I feel like. Yeah. And Kevin definitely kind of like let me down on this one, like. He didn't he do it safe. a lot. Well, I don't want to say he played it safe, but he, he didn't stand out, you know. He I feel like he part. didn't play it safe. I feel like if he would have played it safe, oh, okay. he would have done like catchy hooks. You know what I mean? I feel like that's Kevin playing it safe. Sure. And this one he wasn't. And he was kind of like... Like he had his moments, like his verse on Tanya is one of... His verse on weight. His intro verse on weight is really His good. intro verse on weight is great. Which is, that's a weird, that's a weird track. I, I like such a, a weird track. 
I want to like what? it, but for some reason, I think it's those drums that come in and make it like a dance the, tune. Yeah, the techno drums. Yeah, it's just so weird. IDM drums on it, yeah. It like changes like four times. It's it's strange. I think that's the best example of like it feeling very disconnected. Like every single verse feels like its own song almost. Yeah. The hook on there is really good though. I love the themes of, you know, the nostalgia for the early days of Brockhampton. That's such a I can mm-hmm. totally I can totally see them that that's such a Kevin thing. Yeah. To, you know, miss the old days of Brockhampton. I can just one hundred percent Oh for I, sure. Like I believe that's so, like you know, when I, when I when he says that shit, it's like I totally buy that. Mm-hmm. I totally buy that. It's, Things were a lot simpler. I, you know, they almost would have been better off. I feel like in a lot of ways, not getting big and blowing up. And, mm-hmm. You know, some aspects. I mean, of like course I remember you seeing hear, like you always want him to do well, but yeah. I mean, I remember seeing mm-hmm. interviews with Kevin where like he would talk about how he'd always get offers from like labels, and he was very like scared to sign. Oh, yeah. like he didn't want to. Like, he was like, "This is our thing. We don't want it to be touched by anybody." And then as soon as they did, everything went down the drain. You're right. Yeah. So, what's your final score for um, Iridescence? You know, I don't want to. I don't want to give it a score. Do I have to give it a score? Nah, can man. Can I just give it like a thumbs up or a thumbs down? Yeah, dude. All right, I'm just going. Totally. I'm just going to give it a thumbs up. I feel like number scales are kind of, they're tricky. Yeah. They're kind of tricky. Going with the Rotten Tomato system, I like it. I'm going with Rotten Tomatoes, and I'm giving it a thumbs up. All right. I give it a seven and a half. Seven and a half. I respect yeah. it. I mean, if if honestly, if most artists could make an album like this, they would like to do that. Mm-hmm. That's that's another thing. Like expectations has a lot to do with it. And it's only been like eight months since the, or nine months or so since the last Brockhampton release. It's felt like a fucking decade. Mm-hmm. I guess because of all those, you know, the saturation trilogy coming out within like, you know, each one came out three months. Mm-hmm. But I do also wonder if this wasn't Brockhampton, if I would have the same opinion. Because like when saturation one dropped, I didn't really care for it. I didn't really like it at all, honestly. And so like. I just and my opinions obviously have changed, and now I feel like I'm almost defending this because of the fact that it's Brockhampton, and it's like I wonder if right. it wasn't Brockhampton, if I would feel the same way, or if I'd just be like, no, nah, it's not that great, or no, it's amazing. You know what I mean? Yeah, I feel like there's a certain inclination for us to want to like it. Mm-hmm. I, I can see that, but is but, there? I don't think there's anything wrong with that. No, no, I don't think so either. I mean, personal bias is going to exist regardless, so. Yeah. And, you know, all this crazy info about, like, how the album was, like, made in, like, 10 days in, in, you know, London. Like, a lot of weird stuff came. Like, they scrapped a couple albums to make this. Yeah. Is it really weird that I really want... I wish Team Effort was still going to come out. Yeah, same. I I really liked that title, and I really liked, like, the the art that came with it mm-hmm. like the, yeah, the general it aesthetic like, it, was just, it was just gray it had like a couch or like a you know futon or that blue like and that. gray aesthetic yeah that was great and i really missed that but i, I also that. i also miss puppy simply because like those summer vibes that they nail and like the snippets we got mm-hmm. were all great right so right it's, i'm still wondering is let's get married ever to come out that... it's gonna be the last track on the last album of the trilogy I like downloaded a like some guy did like a flip of it and turned it into like a you know a full full song mix as much as they could with like the four lines of dialogue <laughs> or four lines of lyrics that was given in the beat loop so mm-hmm. they turned it into like a you know kind of a lo-fi hip hop and I, I I like downloaded it ported it to iTunes and put it on my phone <laughs> that's how much I fucked with that snippet that's a re- that's a real so, fan that's a real fan excuse me yeah um shit yeah. So yeah, good album, you know, good album, you know, boys, I, I think they can do better, but you know what? They could also do worse. Y'all deserve it. They were, um, I feel like in a lot of ways they were venting mm-hmm. about their, their rise to fame, their loss of a mirror, the sudden pressures that come with making an album after 
a, you know, three streaks of gold, you know. Mm-hmm. So, you know what, I'll let him have this one. But yeah. I kind of want, I want something a little more. And who knows, choice. maybe, maybe with like, and this is another example of me kind of like using the the context to defend it. So forgive me for that. But I can't help but wonder if like the next albums will kind of make this one seem better or worse in hindsight. Like it was just building That's to something else. I think that definitely happened with Saturation 1 for me. Definitely. Two, came out. Definitely. I was able to go back and appreciate that one a lot more for what it was. Cause now, because I understand what they were trying to do. Because mm-hmm. Saturation 1, I like didn't like at all at first. And now it's easily my second favorite from them. Yep. Do you think they... The, when they do like the pitched vocals now, the pitch them up, it sounds a lot more natural than it used to. Mm-hmm. Which I, bo- I, I don't really have an opinion on that because I liked how they did it before. They just oh, they just way overdid it. Yeah, that was the problem. One of my favorite tracks from Saturation One. I think it's it's either fake or trip. I think it's fake. Mm-hmm. Uses it to an excess. I think they both use it actually. They they do they do. But I really like both those tracks. So. Mm-hmm. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, it's whatever. So yeah, Jorgen von Stranglehold, the god of the fairies. Yes. Did you like um, Dom's verse on Thug Life? On Thug Life? His vocals. Is, it, is that the one where he has like the warbly pitched vocals that sound like they're coming from a coffee can? Was he on Thug Life? Yeah, where he's talking about the corals. I believe that's the one. The fact that I don't know what you're talking about makes me say no, I didn't like it. It's very like warbly and Then again, Thug Life is like my least favorite, so I typically skip over it pretty Oh pretty quickly. Not a huge fan of Thug Life. Let me bring it up. I'll read you the lyrics and see if it rings a bell. It's a Thug Life, Thug Life. Yeah, he says it's a different reconciling with my skeletons I know that I possessed. I sought perfection out in ways I no longer accept. I understand what I know. Oh, that like super, super odd well. outro. Yeah, no, I did not That's like that. That's the first. Yeah, no, I did not like that. Well, damn. I liked it. And that's that's another issue I have. Not issue, per se, but in the week that it's been out, I haven't had time to like digest everything everyone's saying. I've really just been trying to get a feel for like how I feel and like the things I pick up immediately. <laughs> so I need to go back and like check out like those verses and like the ones that I don't even understand what's going on and like kind of yeah, form that... a stronger opinion. I feel you. You ready to move on to another topic? Sure. So did you mention, did we talk about what we've been listening to? Did you I'm, talk about yeah, we talked about Modest Mouse. I mentioned we? Modest Mouse. What have you been listening to? And we'll end on uh, this I've note. Been to, I've been listening to uh I guess uh, kind of more folksy stuff. I or you know. Mm-hmm. I've been listening to a lot of Fleet Foxes. I've been mm-hmm. listening to a lot of Father John Misty. Mm-hmm. That don't surprise me. Him yeah. out, so that's not much. I'm the biggest fan. Also I think the classes I'm taking have made me like I'm in a lot of like weird existential classes. I'm always learning about like dreadful topics and shit. So I've been revisiting pure comedy and that album's a fucking masterpiece. Sure. 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 That's sure. What I'm that's, 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 that's my opinion on pure comedy. Sure. It, it gets a solid you, sir from me. Have you heard the memo though by Mr. Josh Tillman? Yes, I have. I have. Is it not one of the most witty songs you've ever heard ever? <laughs> sure. Are you saying sir or sure? Sure. Hey, I, I well, what do you think? Of pure comedy or that song or what? In general. What do you think of Mr. Tillman? Of Mr. Tillman I I I really like fun fear and I really like fear fun. Or fear fun, you know. Obviously you can tell how much I love it by how how well I remember the name. But I really do like that album. And I really like um I love you, honey bear. And I liked a lot of ideas on God's favorite customer. 
and pure comedy bored the ever loving god out oh, of me. God. Like I know, I know so wrong. I know that like it's all about the lyrics, man, but not even. I mean, sure, it definitely is, but not even. It's also about the vocal performances and instruments. You mean the piano? Are you mean the the uh, and the strings and the acoustic guitar and any other type of weird effects he'll put on? on I, I don't. Every every time I every no, time I throw on that album, I'm like, okay, this time I'll give it a fair chance. This time, <laughs> this is the one. It just it it bores me. I just don't think it, you're. Don't, I don't think you're going through enough existential crisis. Maybe, crisis maybe that's what it is. So. It, it's one of those things where I can like handle like one or two songs off of it in a sitting, but you tossed in more of them. And it's probably also where the album's so daggone long. And most of the songs are so daggone long. It's just, mm, I love literally every song. I just, and it's like, I've come back and cause you know, the album has been out for like a year and a half or something. Mm-hmm. And I just keep coming back and it's like, so, okay. So it was like the first one of the songs I liked. I was like, all right. When I first listened to it, I did not love it either. I liked it a lot. I liked it, and I liked it a lot. And now at the point where I like, I love it, and it's my favorite release from him. Mm-hmm. And I think it's one of the most important, like lyrical, like just lyrically, it's one of the most important albums that's come out in a very long time. Mm-hmm. It just touches on so many cornerstones of like society and who we are, and God, and if any of this fucking matters. Which I think he he's able to resolve to say. It probably doesn't matter, but I'll make it matter just because I like my wife. And Who he I like divorces at the bar. He did not divorce his I wife. He did. I thought that was like the whole point of God's oh, favorite. No, no. I think they just had some problems. She directed the video for God's favorite. Oh, Testament. they're still, they're still together. I'll blame. I'll blame that misinformation on the fader. Shout out to the fader. Fuck the yeah, the fader. <laughs> Fake. We've got these divorce filing papers straight from Mr. Tillman's uh, court hearing. You know, no. But man, it's such a good goddamn album. Every track. Every. Well, I'm, I'm glad you enjoy it. Who knows? Maybe my maybe my classes are making me enjoy Modest Mouse because, like, The Moon in Antarctica and uh, Good News for People Who Love Bad News, like, really, like, hammering the I like, not the idea, but, like, the questions of religion and like my English class is all about those religious studies. Oh my gosh. Just read like right. some Hindu, like the, I don't, I don't know the name of it. And I don't want to act like I do, but, um, the religious text from the Hindu. Religion. Yes. Yes. And yeah. excerpts from that and stuff like that. And maybe, maybe that's making me, want to dive back into modest mouse's idea of religion i don't know maybe i'm just pulling, I think maybe i'm talking back into pure comedy dude yeah maybe maybe i do need to check it out it's been a while it's been like i mean i can i can understand how maybe you personally would not like it because he does take quite a few jabs at religion throughout but but i don't have a problem with that on other records like set aside your if like modest mouse does that on their records and i don't have a problem yeah. with it brand new seems to do it quite a bit and i don't have a problem with it i don't know why yeah, those are the only two bands you're smarter than most people in, in that regard than most people would be able to i swear to god though he delivers the most cutting line i've ever heard in a song ever though and how's this for irony? The idea of being free is a prison of beliefs. Good God. That's so fucking cutting. Just no respect at all. No respect. No respect. Oh, I'm just like sitting here looking at it on my phone, like 13 tracks. And I'm just thinking about how I love each one and like its own. The weakest track is the one. I mean, I don't know. Smoochy, I guess, is the weakest track, but. That's only because he's not talking about some like important overarching theme. He's just talking about how his wife helps him not kill himself. And you know what? Even that's really fucking important, important and great. And the and it's like it's very important. Relationship Our goals. Twenty eighteen. Not to All right. make sure my spouse doesn't kill himself. You no, know, hey, I mean he's still talking about that. Mm-hmm. So 
Did you like God's favorite customer? I I enjoyed it enough to listen to it multiple times, but I won't say it's like in my favorites of the probably year. No, it's not not anywhere close. I mean, no, probably the same for me, which is disappointing to say. I mean, in a certain aspect, mm-hmm. but I like it. I like it a lot. I don't love it. It's probably my third favorite Misty album. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's some really good. There's like a three track run where it's like, what is it? It's it's like, it's please don't die. And then the palace mm-hmm. and disappointing diamonds. And then I think it goes into God's favorite customer. So really, it's a four track run of like really great songs. Those four. Just there's a bunch of really great me. songs on that thing, but there's also a bunch of fairly forgettable ones. It's like half a great album. Yeah, I mean, I, I I'll give him more credit than that, but yeah, and well, more like, than ha- probably more than half. Like but overall, do you like the the like do you like the song Date Night on there? That was like which kind of harkens back to Fear Fun. Yeah, 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 that one. Era. Oh yeah, but see, that's my least favorite track on the record. Really, I do not like that track at all. It's probably one of my least favorite Misty tracks. Wow. Ever as well. I do not like. I don't like the production on the song. I don't like how the drums are like all in the left ear. No, I dig it. I dig it. It's all it's all odd. And plus if you listen to it with like speakers and not headphones, it gets it's a little bit easier to bear. Sure. Sure. Just kinda of mess with your mess with your equalizer, man. Just mess with it. I don't have an equalizer on my turntable setup. Well, I don't have a amp on my turntable setup. Vinyl. You don't hear me complaining. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been listening to a lot of Fleet Foxes as well. I know you're here. big on. I'm big on them. I I I do love them. I, I'm definitely more of a Fleet Foxes like than a Father John Misty man. I like them a lot. I respect them a lot, mm-hmm. and they put out a really good. It's like just quality stuff. I don't know how to explain. Mm-hmm. They're. I mean, Robin Pecknell's got a great voice. His lyrics aren't really that. They're just kind of fodder to accompany mm-hmm. the. They work yeah, I don't really care. Kind of I don't really on. care about the lyrics, so it's not why I listen to Fleet Foxes. Oh yeah, you know what I mean. I listen for his beautiful voice and the you know folk rock. Instrument. Yes, and you know harmonies. They're really it's just a really good band. You know, it's just it's they're like, just so it's just so pleasant. It's just pleasant to listen to. Yeah. Which is weird that you say that though, because Crack Up was not not pleasant not at all. Listen to that. And, it's not the same though, you know. It's very much more quiet, and it's probably would you consider it experimental? It's on the more experimental side, just because of how dense it's so yeah. dense. It's just so dense, yeah. so much going on. Mm-hmm. Third amazing, amazing track. Mm-hmm. Whole album's amazing. Whole album's amazing. Yeah. It's, it's just hard. It's just one of those one. It's not like their first record where you can just kind it's of harder to listen on. to. You yeah. have to really yeah, sit down to listen to it. It's not good. It's not good for background. No, music. not at all. Which I guess in a way shows that they've matured. I suppose as songwriters, that they can create more complex. You know, especially like on like their chord progression side and mm-hmm. anything involving theory, they really up their game a lot. I think. Mm-hmm. But I do also miss just like more, more intelligent, complex stuff. Yeah, but I do also miss like their early, like their first record stuff, where it was just more stripped back and simple, like those simple songs. They're just fun. I definitely miss that, right? To an extent, I'm also glad they're pushing themselves and doing something. And each album has been different and progressive. Yeah, I love that BG's cover they put out. Yeah, um, you d- you bought that one, didn't you? I bought that on as a, a seven inch on record yeah. store day and it's great. It's, I love his, his voice sounds great. <laughs> it really that. does. Petition to, make, such a smooth, it's petition so smooth, to make Robin Pecknell you know? the new lead singer of the Bee Gees. And it's so high pitched, you know, most males, you know, they can't, he's, he's definitely on the higher range as far as male singers mm-hmm. go. And it's very, you know, some of the notes he, you know, hits are just impressive. Mm-hmm. He's very, a very impressive vocals. His his Instagram's like ridiculous. It's like a proto version of what Father John Misty's used to be before he took you know got rid of social media. <laughs> he just posts the stupidest shit like on his Instagram stories. Oh, 
but yeah. I've been listening to Fiona app a lot, although a little less lately. But like, yeah, I know about that. If you asked me like a month, a week, weeks ago, or months ago, a month ago, I would have said, you know, I've been listening to a lot of mm-hmm. Fiona Apple. The Idler Wheel. Yeah, we both went on our like piano Idler. rock binge. <laughs> yeah, you were listening to Ben Fold. Yeah, Ben Fold, yeah. and you were listening to Fiona Apple. Two ends of the spectrum. Yeah, one of them silly nerd piano rock and. Well, I don't want us to call him silly because he does deal with some very serious, stuff. intense topics occasionally. But yeah. more or less, well, Fiona's in her head all the time. Yeah. So I love Fiona. She's cute as a button, <laughs> really. I like saw like her. Um, I don't know. She doesn't really do social media. She has like is a Tumblr, not? I think. No, she's like a Tumblr, I think. And well, she posted something when Mac Miller died. It was really it was sad. You want to talk about that? I want to talk about Mac Miller. Oh no, no, I don't want. I got, I got nothing to say about Mac. No. Rest in peace. But yeah. I got no opinions on him. No offense. No, same dude. I just never got into his music, especially when he first came around. And he was kind of had this image of like frat boy mm-hmm. rap. Like I, every time I, I saw like a picture of him or so like one of his album covers, I was like, I can just imagine a frat dude with like a Corona in his hand playing beer mm-hmm. pong. You know. And he he got big around the time that like I was, uh, like super against hip hop, and he kind of like almost stood for everything that I didn't like about it, like the party boy image. And so by the time that like I was getting more into like not caring about that, it was, he was already getting into his singer songwriter type stuff, whatever you want to call. He did later on, All right? Jazz rap type stuff, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it sucks a lot yeah. though. That shit Ariana Grande posted was very heartwarming. Was or not heartwarming, but heart wrenching. Heartfelt, yeah, heart wrenching. It was very mm-hmm. sad, but um, yeah, it sucks. R.I.P. <sighs> Same on that positive note. Well, is that all? I, I mean, unless you got something you would like to bring up, we've been recording for um, over an hour, so I think it's, I think it's fair to call it quits right now. We could talk about like other. We could talk about like, like what? I don't know. You want to talk about? I don't know. You talk about movies or something? Nah, we'll save that one for another day. We'll save. Right. Yeah, we'll save that one for another day. I just saw the new Martin, not Martin. I just saw the new Michael Moore documentary. Yeah. So yeah, I'm that kind of pretentious. <laughs> you need to you need to get your thoughts out on the new Michael Moore documentary. Oh, you pretentious, pretentious! I see. <laughs> Do what? <laughs> no, you just need to get your thoughts on that What'd soon. You say? I, I got. I, I just yeah, laughed. I'm just gather my notes. I'm just goofing. I'll gather my notes. <laughs> I'll gather my. Phone. Did you bring your notebook into the movie theater with you? I actually had a laptop out. Um, when I went in the theater, though, it was just, well, first off, it was just me. And then this you know, young woman mm-hmm. walked in, and it was just her and I. She was sitting several rows behind me, and I didn't hear anything except her. She would occasionally munch on some popcorn, and that was it. Although, I'll tell you, watching a documentary in a movie theater is one of the weirdest things I can things imagine. Ever. When I watch a doc, yeah, when I watch a documentary, I, I, I kind of tend to pause it a lot and just, you know, see mm-hmm. the... You know, I, I I stretch it out. But it was weird having to sit through for like two hours, just nonchalant, or not nonchalant, but non-stopping. Mm-hmm. But it was pretty. I'd, I'd recommend it. I liked it a lot. They talked about West Virginia for a good like one fourth or fifth of the documentary, so that was pretty fucking. That's interesting. nice. Yeah, West Virginia. I've heard of it. Any West Virginians who are not super hard conservatives, if you're even like just slightly conservative, I would recommend it still. But. There you go. There's my there's my quick sum up of it. I dig it. I dig it. Can't wait to hear more about it in our movie podcast, I guess.